Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to the third part of testing and repairing a shower leak. Um, I hope everybody was there for part one and two. We are just going to do a short little recap on it. As I said, it's a bit of reverse engineering when you start fixing a shower, as you should have actually done it correctly the first time when you built it. So we are today going to look at how to fix a shower floor um, and how to do it from the start, actually um, ending up, but the way it should look like. Okay, now I can't seem to get my slideshow going. One second, there we go. Quick recap on part one and two. Uh, we determined that a leaking shower is a health risk. That is the important thing to know, that a leaking shower due to the mold infestation, um, there's a lot of respiratory problems that can occur due to the mold infestation in the showers. And obviously then continuous leaking can cause structural damage to the property as well. Four most common causes of a shower leak uh, is splash leaks. That would be typically the leaks that occur when showering and uh, the door is leaking or splashing up the water against the door, leaking against the frame. High pressure leaks is the ones obviously uh, from your shower setup, from your taps to your shower rows uh, in the pipes when the pressure is on. Um, uh, more easily detected um, drain leaks, uh, more difficult to detect. And we looked at ways of detecting a drain leak by pouring in a colorant into your water, by just uh, putting it into the drain, blocking it off, and then filling up the shower, flooding the shower floor with a different color and see if it leaks out somewhere and if you see if the level drops inside the shower floor. And then wall and floor tile leaks. Those are the most common ones because why? Your grout tends to move and there's movement on the tiles and you have hairline cracks forming along the shower floor and along the tiles. And a hairline crack is enough to get water to move through towards the other side. And if it's not sealed off and waterproof properly, you have water seeping through to the other side of the wall. And that is very typical when you get to a shower leak. Most of the times when people say, I can see the water or the, the paint is blistering off the wall on the other side. And that would be of water pushing through to the other side of the shower. So once again, very important, do not send your most junior guy to attend to these kind of shower leaks. Send your best plumber, if not yourself, your soft skills package must be in place and you explain the process to the client because this is not going to be a quick fix. It's going to take time. Discuss possible courses of action if a leak is discovered with a client. Remember that the most obvious leak may not be the main one or the only leak. Continue the process and eliminate all possibilities. Otherwise, you'll be back there tomorrow and the day after. There's no quick fix or, or uh, temporary fixes if you do not find the root cause of the leak. So important facts about quick fixes. Replacing the crack grout with new tile grout and applying a waterproof sealer will result in more cracks and leaks in the future. This is only a temporary solution at its best. So you might end up removing the floor and the floor tiles or a, a section of the wall tiles up to a halfway or something to that effect. Brush on waterproof surface coatings will not stop leaks from the most common areas that leak occurs. Uh, this is where the wall and the floor tiles have separated in the corner of your shower cubicle. You get these uh, cans of spray on silicon and uh, all these brush on waterproof products. You can brush it on and it will be a sort of a temporary fix. It will last for a month or two, but it will be back to haunt you. Important facts about quick fixes. Even the best silicon and polyurethane sealants are only a temporary fix and will go green and moldy, causing you leak, uh, your leak to reappear. And uh, this will not result in a permanent bathroom seal. The most common leak then is the floor and wall of the shower. So let's look uh, at a cutout of a typical shower. Uh, as you can see, uh, you have your shower floor with the floor waste drain in the center and uh, the blue arrows, the three are pointing towards where the, the floor cement is or the topping of the floor is. And that is the area that is not waterproof normally. Uh, and that is where the leaks occur. And exactly the same on your left-hand side, 
where you see the purple uh, arrow there, uh, just behind your wall tile on the plaster of the wall, it is not waterproof. And contrary to popular belief, cement is not waterproof. It is porous, if not treated properly, it will absorb water. It's not waterproof. So you can't just put down cement and say, well, it's gonna be waterproof. It has to be waterproofed. Looking at the yellow arrow at the right hand top section, that is the exploded view of the corner of your shower. And the red area colored in there is typical where the small hairline cracks develop in the corner of the shower floor and the wall because your wall is built initially and then a topping is placed into the shower um, up against the wall. So once a crack occurs, you have an area where water can seep through. So the best would be to actually have your floor going in underneath the wall uh, rather than uh, going uh, up against the wall. So when you are repairing as well, you are most probably going to do a bit of a cut out uh, on the tile of the wall and also the plaster of the wall in that section right up to your brick. And then you, when you cast the new floor, you will going, uh, you'll be going in underneath with your topping so that if any water comes down, it will be directly on the floor, directing it towards the drain area, if you uh, can understand that part. Um, as we go along, we'll also be looking at typical timber floor or timber frame housing uh, showers and the old uh, cursed shower tray as well. So it'll be a combination thereof as we go along this morning. This floor, as you can see, the tiles are all cracked there and it, it actually just started as a hairline cracks and the water started seeping through. Being a wooden floor underneath, it uh, went through and it became rotten and eventually the floor just uh, uh, rotted away underneath. So this is what we found once we removed the tiles. It was a wooden floor and we had to just repair the shower because removing the whole floor meant chopping up the whole bathroom floor. So we just did the shower. But once again, we had to explain to the client this is going to take uh, two to three weeks to repair as the floor was now soggy wet. You can see the, the gray coloring on the floor as uh, the other parts of the floor got wet. And we had to dry it out, putting in space heaters, heating up the bathroom drying out that wooden floor. And then it was repaired by placing a shower trap uh, in the center of the shower. If we go back one, you can see the shower trap was right up against the wall. So what was happening is the wall was also accumulating up against the wall and leaking through on the side of the wall. So placing it in the center is you directing all the water when you're showering towards the center. So that is also your most, uh, or the, the best option of a shower trap is in the center of the floor because then all the water is sloping from the wall towards the center and not accumulating up against the walls because at your wall is the most common area where you'll find a hairline crack. So if you have water accumulating while you shower there, um, that is so, more, so much easier for leaks to occur. So the wood was placed in and filled in completely. And then obviously the, water, the floor was not uh, very sturdy. So you need extra support. So what we did is we placed another layer of 22 millimeter shutterboard on top. Uh, as you can see, the shiny bits is glue. We glued the floor down and screwed it down. And obviously don't use a cold glue, which is the, water, the white uh, wood glue. This is a waterproof wood glue so that uh, if any water can, gets into contact with it, it doesn't delaminate. So the floor board was strengthened with another piece of 22 millimeter board on top and screwed down in place. And then we have to waterproof that floor. So now you have to start covering the floor with the waterproofing. So what do you use? This is one of the typical products. Uh, Tile Magic uh, makes this one. Uh, it's a premium base coat and the uh, Tile Primer keying agent. You have others that uh, you will find at other outlets uh, called key coat. They're all doing exactly the same. Uh, in the old days, the farmers used to use uh, on the cement dams they used normal Portland cement and added salt to it and made a slurry and painted the, the walls and that sealed it off. Today we have these beautiful uh, latex problem, uh, uh, products such as keying agent or commonly known as bonding liquid as well in the, in the, in the industry. So uh, your premium base coat would be Portland cement, which is mixed with a fine sand, which is sieved. So it's just easy and clean uh, already prepared for you. So no matter what you use, um, you make sure you have a cement-based product with a keying agent. So go out there, look at a product that you are fair with or that you like using. Make sure you read the instructions how to apply this because that's very important. Get the right product for the right application. 
Um, and if not, there's always a helpline on there. You contact them, ask them, how do I apply this product? This one specifically, you apply uh, on the floor and the wall in one direction and uh, you leave it for 12 hours to dry and then you do a second application uh, 90 degrees opposed to that one. So here typically we're doing the floor and the wall. As you can see the, the floor at the bottom nicely, it's all painted into the corner to seal off any cracks that could form over there. And the wall is painted up and down the first day and the, the next day uh, after 12 hours, it's painted from left to right. So you do that with the whole floor and that is the way the latex layer works. And then it covers up all the pores in the cement. So here we have uh, placed the trap into a floor, exactly the same procedure. We are painting that uh, latex layer all around this trap before we are putting in any topping. Um, and you can see even there, the brick wall hasn't been plastered even on this one. Um, and we're going to paint the wall to waterproof it before it's plastered. So it also gives a good grip for your, your floor, your topping to grip to it. At the right hand side, you can see the pipe the, of the going out from that trap. Um, the pipe is painted as well and the trap itself is painted so that it gives an adhesion to the, the cement topping onto that uh, foreign uh, matter, which is plastic PVC. Um, if it's just smooth and there's no grip to it, the cement doesn't uh, grab on it. But if you've put something like this onto it, it grips very well. And if you've been in the tiling business, you'll know that you can actually paint this right on top of a ceramic tile and you can tile directly onto it. So the cement will grip on it. So that's what you want. You want the cement to grip to that pipe because if it doesn't grip to the pipe, it will form a hairline crack around the pipe and you'll have a drain leak typically. Um, you do get membranes that you can place over some of these, like this trap actually typically came with a membrane that was placed in the box, but I do find them to delaminate easily and very difficult to work with. Um, but if you use a sealer like this, you can actually leave away the membrane and it won't be necessary to use. So here's a typical floor once again sealed off and you'll see the color. It's now a nice, nice light gray and it is dried out and ready for the second coat. Um, as you can see, we've dug open the, the section there to put in a new trap. So it's going to uh, put the trap in, get painted a second time around, and we are going to then cast the topping on top of that. And once again, beware when you chop up that floor. As you can see here, we found uh, discovered an electric pipe running right through the underneath the shower. So you have all these uh, weird and wonderful surprises chopping up the floor. And for some unknown reason, some plumbers have uh, thought that this is a place where you put in all the junctions. It looks like Germiston Station underneath the shower floor when you chop up that floor and you end up doing a lot of pipe work. So be careful when you chop up that floor. This is now a typical wooden floor where we've built a, a basin basically out of wood, uh, also shutterboard as you saw previously. Um, and we have now already painted it uh, and ready for putting in the topping around the trap. Um, as you can see, we've also placed uh, some uh, strengthening in there, uh, being a wire mesh, a galvanized mesh so that it doesn't rust, um, and that will strengthen the floor. Um, on the next slide, we are going to look wh uh, what we do normally when we do a, a dry walling like this. Um, as you can see, you can see the stud on the right hand side. So let's look at the next view of it. They have colored in the stud in yellow and uh, the red section on the right hand side. That is your rhino board on the outer wall, not the inner wall. And where the purple line runs down, that is where the inner wall rhino board will fit onto the shower floor. So once the floor is casted, we put the rhino board back and that would be right on top of the floor. So with the floor sloping out from underneath the wall, you'll never have water going through to the other side of the wall. It'll always move towards the center. And that's why I said, the, the most ideal place for the shower trap is in the center because uh, the arguments always people say, well, I don't want to stand on the trap, but you'll never really stand on the trap because you have two feet. It'll always stand either side if you're standing in the center of the shower. So um, it is the best uh, ideal position. Also, it's easier for tiling. You have a nice level uh, look and appearance in the shower as well. Whereas you do it towards the corner, you're going to always have tiles cut uh, at an angle going down towards the corner. So if you can uh, convince the owner, say to him, move the trap to the center of the shower floor. So now typically that cut out again, um, looking at the blue arrow, um, that purple area, that is where the crack occurs. So what we've done now is we've moved the floor in underneath the wall and uh, that crack uh, will occur underneath the wall, that hairline crack, 
but not in the area where the water is in contact with the wall. So now we have to do the topping on top of the floor. What do we do with that cement? Because the topping is not waterproof either. So you mix the topping as they normally do with uh, any floor screeds and you have an additive. You're looking at a product like the Sicker Flex powder or Coprox waterproof cement additive. Um, you add that to your topping and that will also ensure that the pores of the cement is closed when you are uh, putting in this topping. But make sure that this uh, product that you use is uh, mixed in the right ratios. Um, if you're going to put in that, that little bag of Sicker Light, it looks like you can put in the whole bag, you know, um, but that can actually treat up a, to a whole bag of cement. So you're only going to put in a little bit, look at the ratio, mix it to the instructions. Otherwise, the cement is going to become all soggy. So typically, there's your cement mixture. Um, topping, as you know, is a drier mixture. It's just made moist, and then it's compacted into the floor. Um, once you can see, it's also wetted on, on, the, uh, on the cement area, and you compact it into that floor and start packing it in. So once you packed it in, you start floating it up around your shower waste and you smooth it down. Don't use a steel trowel because it makes it too smooth. You want it to adhere. So you are going to do it with a wooden trowel and uh, do it to the right level you want all the way around. So typically uh, here is a shower. You can see the difference in color, which has been waterproofed. The normal plaster on the side, this is a new, new build. And that is all in a lighter color once it's waterproofed. That is what it will look like. So there's the shower cubicle now, waterproofed, the wall and floor all in one set. And this is how the shower should have been built from this word go. And then you wouldn't have had uh, the need to go and repair after a couple of months. So you build the floor, you put in your additive, and you waterproof the wall and floor all in one go. So you are building, it's just like building a bucket eventually. So you've got a waterproof container there now. And then you can start with your tiling. So you, uh, if you are repairing a shower, um, uh, I said earlier, you have to become uh, quite clever uh, looking at uh, the tiles. Um, if you can see the top layer of the tiles slightly different in color to the bottom one, um, because we couldn't find any more of the same tiles, but at least we could get a color to match. So when you're repairing it, uh, a shower, um, look at uh, easy ways to repair it. This one only needed waterproofing halfway down the shower. Um, and we had the border line there, so we could put the border in and we waterproofed the bottom section of the shower and repaired it. So look at all these options. You have to become quite clever when repairing showers after they have failed and started leaking. Once again, a timber floor, typically a timber floors move. So what, what to do is you've got to put in added strength and added support. So we added support where the trap is in the center of this floor, added some extra wood to make it stronger so that when you stand on the floor, it doesn't move. And then a layer of uh, 22 millimeter shutterboard was placed on top. This was now typically a shower tray, the cursed tray. You can see the wood on the side all the way around. It's got a little gap between the tile and the wood. That is where the tray is going to slide in. This was an old shower that we had to repair, so we cut it out. We want that tray to move in underneath that tile so that the water goes on top of the tray and not next to the tray where it forms a hairline crack. So this is a typical shower tray and uh, the width on the side of that, that tray is quite wide. So you have water standing there. You don't want the water to stand there. Sometimes the trays are bent and buckled on the sides as well. They're not flat. They're not actually sloped towards the inner side of the tray. So you want that water to move down. You don't want uh, after somebody showered water standing there because if it does form a hairline crack, it's going to seep through that corner. So what I use here is I take a 50 by 50 millimeter wooden batten and then I cut it uh, uh, at a 45 degree angle, and then I get a triangular shaped piece of wood that I can paste up all around the corner to seal that corner. But now, once again, if you're using wood like this, you can also use an angle, uh, a piece of aluminum angle that you stick into the corner with a silicon based product, and even screw it down to the tray by drilling a hole properly into the tray and using brass screws or stainless steel. Um, this wood, you have to treat, obviously, you have to seal it off, not with an oil based product, but with a uh, polyurethane product to make sure that it doesn't absorb any water if there's a hairline crack. So once the wood is sealed properly, you can stick and glue it in with something like Prattly, no more nails, and screw it down into that corner. So now you have a, 
a nice corner sloping towards the inner side of the tray. And then you can put a tile on it and tile it off. And that is what the finished product would look like. So the water will run down the wall and into the shower tray. And this helps a lot. It does work. Um, this is a, a, a fix. Um, it's not a quick fix. Once again, it takes quite time to do this. There's another shower also did we done uh, and that has got an aluminium angle all the way around the bottom took a white aluminium angle and stuck it in there with glue and uh, the shower now has a seal a proper seal in the corner. So once again guys don't send your most junior guy send the send the, the best plumber if not yourself talk to the client explain the process discuss the possible courses of action remember that the most obvious leak may not be the main or only one. And there's no quick fix or temporary fixes. And obviously, you guys, as you go along with these shower leaks, you will find more and better ways to repair this. This is not the only way to repair it that I've explained, but this is a possible ways to explain it. There are many different approaches to fixing. This is one of the basic methods. Make sure you read the instructions of the products you use. That is very important. Use it in the right ratios. Don't add a little bit just because you think it's going to make it stronger. It might make it weaker. If unsure, contact the representative and ask before applying, only to find out it's the wrong product after application is a bad one. So on a new build, follow the process of waterproofing the wall and floor in layers. You will not be sorry because doing it from the word go is much quicker than trying to repair it. So you guys, thank you very much for listening for the three-part series. Uh, this is the last one of the year, as uh, Sean said earlier. So happy plumbing out there. And I know a lot of guys are not closing down this season. But for the guys out there closing, enjoy the rest and be safe on the roads. There's a lot of maniacs on the, on the roads. So be careful out there and really enjoy the time off uh, if you're going away. Thank you very much for listening. And if there are any questions, pop them in the tab there. And let's see if Sean is back and he can, can take the questions for us. Thank you, Sean. All right. There are no questions for you this morning, Maria. So I will go ahead and end the session off. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for joining us over this uh, series for this year. All right. Um, getting up on a Thursday morning. It's made slightly better by the amount of attendance that we get uh, from you guys. So I want to say thank you very much. And then to all of the presenters, um, Marius, yourself, and everybody else that um, – or that has taken the time out to prepare sessions like this, right? Uh, it is only through people like, or because of people like you, we are able to give such a good product out. Morris, I do see a question has come through, right? Okay. So I'll go ahead and read it to you. It reads, what product can you use for the fiber cement shower compared to brick wall? The fiber cement, um, I take it they're talking about the Rhino board. You can actually use exactly the same product onto Rhino board or the fiber cement. The fiber cement uh, is commonly known as NewTek. Um, it was the old asbestos board. Um, and then obviously they removed the fiber, the asbestos fiber, and they placed a wood fiber in there and cement. So it's compressed at high, uh, at high temperature and a lot of pressure. So you have this NewTek board. And uh, you can add this absolutely directly onto it, uh, the key coat primer or your tile magic uh, base coat uh, primer, and it will stick to it. It will not come off. That's a very good sealer on the new tech board. Okay. 100%. The next question here reads, how about the Black Abe waterproofing? Uh, yeah, that I think uh, uh, that basically the, it goes about what the basis thereof is. The, the black waterproofing, that is your bitumen product. Um, remember, you are going to most probably retile, so you are you must make sure that you can add a tile adhesive to that. Um, I'm not sure if you can use a tile paste onto the black one. I'm quite sure if uh, depending on how it dries. Um, so as I said, there are many different products out there. Personally, I've never used uh, the bitumen-based products. I prefer using a cement-based product because everything we are using is cement in some way or another. But um, just make sure if you are using it, uh, read the instructions. Um, uh, obviously, the Internet is uh, full of information as, this, as far as this is concerned. Um, there are a lot of actually YouTube videos out there showing uh, how to uh, waterproof these showers. Um, a lot of these products, obviously, uh, uh, or shows that you see uh, waterproofing showers are made overseas. So they have different products out there as well, so which, which you won't find here. 
but look on your local market and then uh, you know ask the representative can this be used here yeah, will it work can i add cement to it so yes i'm quite sure you can use uh, a bitumen based product with a black one uh, if you if you prefer using and if you've used it before um, uh, go ahead with what you're doing just make sure that uh, it can uh, uh, adhere to the cement uh, and the tile uh, cement Right, the next question reads, do you have to use membrane as well in the corner especially? Um, as I said, uh, a membrane is a very difficult one. Um, they tend, if you if you end up with a hairline crack later down the line, um, they tend to delaminate. So you'll have water going in underneath and you might get your tiles uh, delaminating. Um, I haven't used it with great success. Uh, I've removed a lot of shower floors where membrane has been used and then invariably it's loose. You pull it up and uh, it's like uh, picking up an old carpet. Um, I don't know how uh, uh, well these membranes are suited for this. Because you have different uh, thicknesses of these membranes, um, I do think if you can get a very, very thin membrane, um, this will work. But uh, mostly these uh, products um, uh, seal well enough because there is latex in uh, this product. Uh, it, it allows for movement as well. So it, it stretches. And uh, I don't uh, think uh, a membrane would necessarily be bad. If you've used it with success, yes, you can use it up in the corner. Um, uh, as I said, uh, the best one would be if you can get that floor in underneath the tile and underneath your uh, plaster. So if you're going to put in your plaster um, after the wall has been uh, plastered, what you can do is mark it up uh, where your floor topping is going in, cut out that section of plaster, and remove it and then when you cast the topping of the shower floor that will go in underneath your plaster of the wall so that is the ideal situation to have because if there's any water coming down it will go onto the floor it won't go back towards the side so you want to avoid having a wall and a uh, how can I say it, a vertical connection between the wall and floor so if you can have the floor on top or the the wall on top of your floor that is the, the important one but membrane is good uh, if you've used it before and it's successful, you can use it. Uh, I prefer not to use it because these latex product, products are really, really tough. If you come to think of it, if you can put it on top of a, a ceramic tile and tile on top of it, it really sticks. All right, 100%. Um, Morris, we have got one more question and then 30 seconds to answer it, so I'm going to go ahead and read it quickly to you. The correct way of installing a shower tray which has legs onto a waste, i.e. joining the waste pipe, on a first floor concrete without a flexi pipe. You can't get into the glue it, you can't get into glue it properly. Um, Sean, yeah, I think you must send me the, the, the chap's number uh, or his uh, email and I can discuss it with him because I don't think I can answer it in 30 seconds. Um, those flexible hoses are terrible. Try and avoid them at all costs. Um, they do not last. Um, what I've done uh, previously is I've actually you know, put the floor in and you get uh, the shower waste trap uh, that screws in from the top. So it, you have to get it into exactly the right position, mark it on the floor, then put in your uh, waste pipes and glue it in place and then move your shower floor over the top so that you can just screw it in from the top. So it's a very uh, measure and uh, measure sensitive sort of job to do. But those flexible hoses uh, are not a good option. Um, if you have to do it, you know, obviously do it. But if you can, avoid it at all cost. But send me his number and I can have a chat with him. I've got some photos I can send him where we've done that already. All right, 100%. Well, then that is all of the time we have got for this morning. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I am going to go ahead and end the session off now. Please remember the survey on the way out and enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.